Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Shrikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So we are uh, into the sixth week of our course. So we are sort of at the almost at the halfway mark, and we have uh, already covered quite a few different. Uh, tools for analyzing nonlinear systems and also adaptive systems and also parameter identification laws and their convergence right um so starting this week we are going to look at um, how to actually design adaptive controllers so this is sort of the plan and uh, of course as always, uh, we have this very nice motivational background of this uh, SpaceX satellite uh, orbiting the Earth. And the hope is that the algorithms that we design and develop uh, will help drive systems such as these autonomous. So what we were, we had sort of started looking at last time was an introduction into uh, the first adaptive control problem for this course. All right. Um, so, so thank you for your patience. Of course, uh, you would have probably hoped to see uh, an adaptive controller, which is the topic of the course, or which is the name of the course, uh, sooner maybe. But well, I mean, we of course had to cover quite a bit of. Uh, preliminary material uh, in order for us to be able to understand and design adaptive controllers. All right. So great. So we had just started with our uh, scalar first order system. Right? So I'm in fact going to uh, mark this piece as uh, lecture 6.1 just for a reference. So we had looked at sort of an introduction of what we want to typically do in adaptive control. We looked at this first order scalar system where we have a constant unknown parameter appearing linearly in this system. So X is a uh, X and U and F are all scalar value. All right. And this const and this theta star constant, which is unknown, appears linearly in this uh, system. And uh, we have the control objective of the state x of t, uh, tracking a smooth bounded trajectory. And we also stated the standard assumptions that are prevalent in all adaptive control designs. Yeah, at least most adaptive control designs and definitely with the ones that we are going to focus on in this course, all right? So, so this is where we are, and this is where we will start um, lecture. 6.2. This is the second lecture of this week. Yeah. So the first thing that we do is uh, design an error system. Yeah. So, so why do we do that? Why do we design an error system? Um, we are almost always interested in driving things to zero. If you remember when we were um, sort of talking about stability of uh, nonlinear systems in the sense of Lyapunov, we eventually started assuming at uh, all points that, uh, you know, the equilibrium is the zero or the origin is the equilibrium, right? And that's why we, uh, whenever we are given a tracking problem, for example, where a signal X has to track a signal R, we simply construct an error signal, which is X minus R, so that whenever this E goes to zero, we know that X goes to R, right? So this is, essentially the aim of constructing an uh, error signal. And once we have an error state, if you may, we write the error dynamics just by taking a derivative, of course, and substitute for x dot, yeah, from our original uh, system dynamics, we get something of this form that is an equation 2.8, all right? So here, the first two pieces are essentially the same as what you have in the system dynamics. 
and uh, you just have a minus r dot corresponding to the reference trajectory that we are trying to follow. So it should be sort of obvious to you that if you want, if your reference is a constant, that is, if you want to move to a constant value or to zero value, then r dot is zero, and therefore this piece is also zero. All right. So whenever you're trying to track a constant reference, then uh, it's typically this is called the uh, if r of t is constant it's called the regulation problem yeah the tracking problem is when r is a function of time the regulation problem is when r is a constant and if r is zero if r equal to zero, it's called a stabilization problem. Okay. So three kinds of problems. One is if r is a function of time, just like we have written here, then it's a tracking problem. If r is a constant value, then r dot is zero and it's called the reg uh, regulation problem. And if r of t is in fact zero, that is, if you just want to go to the origin, just want the states to go to the origin, then it is called a stabilization problem. All right. So there's just nomenclature for you. So anyway, so this is um, what are the uh, error dynamics. So this is the error dynamics. And this is the system that we will work with. This is the system that we will work with. So the first step, right, in any adaptive control design is to design a controller uh, assuming that the parameter is known. Of course, this is called the known parameter control design. Okay, so this is the first step, right? Again, uh, the, sort of, this is the very standard sort of thing that mathematicians and applied mathematicians do. We've already talked about this. You try to solve the simpler problem first so that you get some nice ideas uh, to solve the more complicated problem all right so that's really what we're trying to do the simpler problem is when this parameter theta star is just assumed to be known and the question is can you construct a controller u so that e is you know asymptotically stabilized all right so so how would you design this feedback so one of the simplest ways to do this is to imagine or or to uh, sort of specify your target system all right uh, so then the standard question that arises is what is a good target system? Right. So it should be obvious that any target system should be such that the, uh, in that at least for the target system, the error is uh, converging to zero as t goes to infinity and also is asymptotically stable. Right. So you, at least your target system should be nice. Right. It should do what you want it to do. In our case, you want the variable e to be asymptotically stabilized to zero right? and so therefore you should have a target system which is asymptotically stabilizing to zero right? and secondly you should uh, ensure that the target system has some similarity to the original system right um, if this is, for example if this is a first order system just like it is it would be sort of ridiculous to consider a second order target system because i will never be able to compare this and the this. So things like that. So the target system should sort of match yeah, the original system and it should have the nice properties of you know, uh, asymptotic stability that you desire from the original error system. Okay. So in this case, uh, what do we choose? We choose our target system to be E dot is minus KE. Why? We know the solution for this. It's a scalar system. So I know that this is in fact exponentially stable, right? So is a uh, is a good it 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 has good behavior of e of t. Okay. The second thing is it should be close. It should match. What do I mean by matching? I mean that by choosing some control here, I should be able to match this right hand side with this right hand side. And yes, it is in fact possible by choosing a control of this kind. All right, so this is an important thing, remember. So I'm going to repeat it. 
the target system is chosen to be e dot is minus ke the first sort of principle of choosing a target system is that it should behave well which in this case means e is asymptotically stabilized for the target system which it does in fact exponentially stable the second is it should sort of match the original system what is this match it means that by choosing an appropriate controller i should be able to match this right hand side with the target system right hand side okay yeah this is these two are important and in this case indeed i can do that just by choosing u to be of this form so the second term here cancels the term corresponding to the trajectory the last term cancels the dynamics notice that we have assumed theta star is known otherwise this control is not implementable all right so if theta star was unknown i cannot implement this control yeah so this is not an adaptive controller so this is just a controller in the case of the known parameter yeah so this just cancels the nonlinear dynamics this ca cancels the trajectory component and the first term helps with the matching the first term is essentially what helps with the matching so now that we have this we know that this is exponentially stable and we also can very very easily construct the lyapunov function which is just the basic one half e squared that's the simplest possible choice yeah which is in fact radially unbounded and all the uh, nice jazz which you look for in a Lyapunov candidate yeah and further if you take v dot so this is the closed loop system now if you take v dot along this closed loop system i get minus k and therefore v dot is also negative definite right? so in fact you get global asymptotic stability yeah for e in fact you get global exponential stability right why do i get global exponential stability because um, v is just half e squared right so it is bounded on both sides by this class k infinity function which is half e squared itself you can take half e squared itself and further v dot is also um you know v dot the minus v dot is also upper bounded by uh, a class k infinity function of the same magnitude they can use just k e squared here okay this is the same order of magnitude class k infinity function therefore uh, this is in fact globally exponentially stable equilibrium so e equal to zero is globally exponentially stable right so this is in fact more than what we are looking for but well in this case we are able to do that okay so what have we been able to do we've been able to design this controller right for this uh, known case ah. yeah for this known case we have been able to design this controller yeah with this of course k has to be a positive constant yeah such that your error exponentially decays to zero and is asymptotically in fact exponentially stable equilibrium and zero is an exponentially stable equilibrium of the error system so essentially everything that we want yeah except so i mean so so for the known case we are i mean it's a scalar system of course i mean it's, it was not very hard work to be honest to construct a stabilizing controller right as you would have imagined yeah so for the known case we are able to do all the good things excellent and as, as we should we are very happy about it but um not a big deal yeah? still a scalar system right great now the next step now is to design the controller for the unknown parameter case that is when theta star is unknown what do we do how do we construct an adaptive controller and this follows a very very simple logic and this logic is stated in the form of the certainty equivalence principle so the certainty equivalence principle says that in order to design the controller for the unknown case we retain the same controller structure as in the known case and replace the actual values of the parameters 
by the estimates. Okay, so the certainty equivalence principle. So certainty means that when the parameter values are known, equivalence means that the structure of the controller remains exactly the same. The only thing you change is replace the true values like this, that is the theta star by its estimate, which is denoted by theta hat. Okay, so this is very important. So we always use the theta hat to denote estimate of theta star. So the hat operator denotes the estimated value and the tilde is the theta minus theta hat or theta star minus theta hat is the parameter error. This is very standard notation that we will continue to use throughout this course. Okay? So please get used to this notation. Theta hat or the hat notation always indicates an estimate. The tilde notation always indicates the parameter error or the estimation error. Okay. So what do we do? We pick up the same control law as 210 and we replace this theta star by its estimate theta hat. Because everything else remains the same. Notice that we are yet to prescribe how theta hat is calculated. Okay. So this will come subsequently. But for now, all we do is we replace the true value theta star by its estimate theta hat. And this is what the certainty equivalence principle dictates. Yeah. So now the important thing to note is that because theta hat may not be equal to theta star, as would be natural because you don't know the value of theta star. So you cannot possibly have an estimate which exactly matches the theta star, right? So when you write the error dynamics, there's a small change, right? The first term in, remains the same, but then there's an additional term which arises because of the parameter error, right? Because this theta hat is not equal to theta star, an error term shows up here. And this is the theta tilde that we are talking about. Okay, so one of the things that should have already uh, come to your notice is that I have very carefully put in a time argument on the estimate. Okay, although my original parameter was a constant, my estimate of the parameter is an evolving object. All right? It is always evolving or changing yeah, over time. Therefore, it is a function of time. It is not a constant. Yeah, Because there is literally no logic to um, having a constant estimate for another constant. Because if your estimate is wrong, you never get to sort of improve it because you chose a constant estimate. Yeah, So if you chose an estimate which was off by, you know, 10 units, then it remains off by 10 units all the time. You can never improve the performance. You cannot expect to cancel the effect of the unknown parameter if you did not choose a time varying estimate. Okay? So there is no point in having a constant estimate for another constant. So although our true value is assumed to be a constant through the entirety of this course, the estimate will always be a time dependent quantity. All right, great. So now we have a different closed loop system, which is this guy, yeah, which contains the parameter error mode, right? So, so what do we do? We now do what is called uh, Lyapunov redesign, yeah. And what is this? Which basically, uh, we use a Lyapunov candidate in order to come up with an update law. Okay, this is a very standard method, right? So. What is the idea? Idea is um, use Lyapunov candidate to derive theta hat dot update law. Yeah, so the expression for theta hat dot, that is the expression for evolution of the update, is called the update law, yeah. it's the natural name. So what's the idea? I first guess a Lyapunov function. I don't guess a theta hat dot. 
All right. I don't start by guessing a theta hat dot. I start by guessing a Lyapunov candidate. Okay. And what's the simplest Lyapunov candidate? I pick the original candidate, which was half e squared. Right? For the known case, if you know, if you remember, it was half e squared. So I choose the original uh, piece. But then I know that there is now another state. Right? Why is there another state? I introduce the parameter error. Yeah, which appears in the dynamics as a state. Okay. And therefore, I add a term corresponding to that state. Okay, which is something like 1 over 2. Uh, right. 1 over 2 gamma theta tilde square. Where gamma is just some positive constant. Okay. Where gamma is some positive constant. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So, it's a very, very simple choice. Standard, simple, quadratic choice. Yeah, nothing too complicated. I chose whatever was already there, which is one half e squared, and I added to it a quadratic term in the new state, which is the parameter error. Yeah, and that's with some positive gamma. So now for this system with, with theta tilde and e as our states, this is in fact uh, positive definite. Yeah, so, so in fact, uh, V is radially unbounded, not just positive and definite, right? It's just quadratic, sum of two quadratics in the two states. Okay, so what do we do? Um, well, I mean, of course, gamma is what is called the adaptation gain. It will show up soon in the update law, and you will understand why it is uh, called the adaptation gain. So what do we do? We take the derivative of V. Then we take the derivative of V, and we substitute from the error dynamics here okay so what is the derivative it is simply e e dot minus gamma theta tilde theta hat dot okay so the question is why did we get a minus sign this is because of how we define theta tilde so theta tilde is equal to theta minus theta cap okay. and so theta tilde dot is equal to minus Theta hat dot because theta star is a constant, so its derivative is of course zero, right? So this is how you get the negative sign. Okay, so all that we have done is taken the derivative of this v, and now for e dot we substitute the dynamics. So we do nothing for theta hat dot because we have not even specified the dynamics for theta hat dot, so we do not do anything, but we plug in for e dot from the dynamics. And once we do that, yeah, and you just expand it out, you will get the first term minus k e squared. Notice there's a nice negative term already. So we like this term. We're not going to mess with this term because k is positive. And so there's a minus k e squared, nice negative term. All right. And then you get the term corresponding to the parameter error. So this term would not have existed if the parameter was known. So this is there only because there is a parameter estimation error. And that is simply uh, theta tilde f times e. Okay. So the first two terms are just coming from here. And the last term is copied as it is. Last term is copied as it is. Now, behold this magic. Yeah. What is this magic? Both these terms have theta tilde in it. Yeah, both these terms have theta tilde in it. And so what do I do? I take the theta tilde common. Right? See, if there was no theta tilde in one of these terms, for example, there was no theta tilde here, it would have been a difficult challenge to specify theta hat dot because this theta tilde is multiplying theta hat dot. So in order to specify a theta hat dot, I would have had to have theta tilde in the reciprocal. And this creates all sorts of problems. First, theta tilde is not known. Theta hat is known, but theta tilde is not known. Therefore, having theta tilde in any kind of update law doesn't make any sense. It's no longer feasible. Yeah. And secondly, you never want to design any controller or update law with states in the denominator. Yeah. Because if they go close enough to zero, then things will blow up for sure. So you don't usually have ever designed 
update laws or control laws with denominators containing mistakes. Yeah, so this is something that you should be very careful about. Okay, so, so this is a rather nice coincidence, if you may, although this is just an outcome of the structure of the candidate Lyapunov yeah, function, that both these terms have theta tilde, which can be nicely taken out. And then what we are left with is these guys. Now notice gamma is strictly positive, so can be divided now. Yeah, so not a big deal. So what do we do? We do the best thing we can. Yeah, because this is a mixed term. I don't even know what this is. Okay. I cannot have a theta tilde in theta hat now because like I said, theta tilde is not implemented. Theta tilde is not known. Yeah, so this is very important. Theta tilde is unknown. Many, many students make these mistakes. Theta tilde cannot appear in the control or update law. Okay, this is important. Yeah, if you ever designed an adaptive control and your theta tilde or the parameter error appears in the update law or the control law, then you did it wrong. Yeah, because you cannot have an unknown, yeah, because it is unimplemented. It's as simple as that, right? So, what do we do? So, the, we do the best thing we can. We simply cancel this one because it's a non definite, indefinite quantity and we don't know what to do with it. We simply make it, try to make it zero. And that's what we do by choosing this kind of a theta hat dot. All right. And once we make this choice, this term goes away. And we are left with just this. Okay. Now look at this carefully. I say that this is negative semi-definite. All right. Why do I do that? For the known case, if you notice, I, I had the same expression for V dot. Although the V was different, I had the same expression for V dot. And I said it was negative definite. But here, I say it is negative semi-definite only. Why? Simple. Because the system now has two states. Not just E like in the known case, but also theta tilde, it is a parameter error. And I have said this quite a few times that any Lyapunov candidate or its derivative, if it does not contain all the states, it cannot be definite. Okay. For a function to be definite, it has to contain all the states. There are no two ways about it. Now, V dot does not contain all the states. But it is definitely non-positive. Therefore, it is negative semi-definite only. Right? It's only negative semi-definite. So what do we know? We can all, as you, as always, apply the uh, Lyapunov theorems. And what will I get? Yeah, I will get that uh, the system that is the error dynamics or the E theta tilde dynamics is uniformly stable at uh, 0, 0 equilibrium. Okay. Whenever I talk of stability, it is important to specify the equilibrium. Right? So we only get uniform stability from the Lyapunov theorems. Yeah, we cannot get anything more. Why uniform? Because of course, your V and V dot do not depend on time explicitly and therefore you have uniform stability. Okay. So, which is nice, which is a nice property, which means the you know, straight trajectories are going to uh, behave well. Yeah. Not start to blow up and stuff like that. However, we cannot guarantee that they converge to the origin, right? Because asymptotic stability has two pieces, right? It is stability and convergence right? we got the stability we don't have the convergence all right so uh, in order to do uh, analyze the convergence we need additional tools and what is this additional tool this is of course the barbell algorithm and what is called signal chasing analysis yeah and this is what we will sort of uh, start with next time right? so great
So what did we look at today is that we started to discuss uh, an adaptive control design for a first order scalar system. We uh, first designed the controller for the known case and then using a certainty, the certainty equivalence principle, we uh, obtained a controller for the unknown parameter case. In order to derive an update law, we guessed a Lyapunov function first or a candidate Lyapunov function first and then took the derivative in order to guess an update law. And until today, we have been able to prove that the system is uniformly stable using the Lyapunov theorems. But we, of course, want to move in sort of claim mode, yeah, which is what we are going to look at in the next session. Right. So this is where we stop today. Thank you for joining.